Imagine you are an engineer. You receive a task to design a machine capable of digging tunnels through some of the toughest rock on Earth. Not only must this machine power through hard rock at an almost 45 degree angle inside a mountain, but it must also contend with ice cold water pockets where the pressure can be deadly to both the machine and its human operators. This is not a fictional scenario, but a real one that some of the world's best engineers have made a reality. Let's take a closer look at this amazing machine. Welcome to Boost. May 2019, Lago Ritem, Switzerland. This lake is at the height of 1,850 meters or 6,000 feet above the surface of the ocean. 800 meters below the lake is the Ritem Hydro Power Station, which was built more than 100 years ago. Engineers are working to expand this power station to more than quadruple the power output. How hydro power stations work is by utilizing the pressure of water above the station, usually behind a dam. This water pressure then generates electricity through water turbines and generators. The problem? Building high power output hydro stations can be difficult. In the Lago Ritem situation, three exploratory bores on the tunnel axis, which were made in advance, showed that the rock is tricky to deal with down to a depth of around 200 meters, so conditions are quite bad for tunnel construction. Previously, the old station used surface pipes, but to support the increased output, engineers have decided that an underground tunnel is required. The underground tunnel, or shaft, has a diameter of 3.2 meters. It will be excavated using a tunnel boring machine that was developed just for this project. The difficult rock and the slope of nearly 45 degrees present extreme challenges for the machine. The sloped shaft is roughly 1,400 meters long and ends in a space created in advance, known as the slide chamber. From this space, another tunnel will lead into the lake. Work on the project began in January 2019 with the construction of the lower chamber space near the power plant at the bottom of the mountain. About 250 blasting stages were planned, with more than 20,000 holes for explosive charges. The engineers did not expect danger posed by the water that's situated in the ground, because the water entering the construction site is only expected to be under low pressure, and the special explosive charges should perform even under wet conditions. However, it was here that the teams faced big problems. After yet another blast, there was a strong flow of water under high pressure, corresponding to a water column of about 100 meters in height. While facing an unexpected situation like this, it would be irresponsible to venture further into unknown rock. It was decided to drill holes into the rock to first get the water out. During this process, water repeatedly entered the drilling hole at flow rates of up to 100 liters per second, which was not a good sign for the project. Unlike what was expected, some of the rock the teams were dealing with was highly fragmented. This risked the continuation of construction as well as the entire project. It was clear that to continue construction, it would be necessary to use something called the injection shields. This process involves material being injected through boreholes to seal the gaps inside the fragmented rock. In order to protect the existing structure, the last 10 meters of the tunnel section was filled with concrete to seal it off. The concrete prevented the injection material that was injected into the boreholes from leaking into the tunnel. To the surprise of the experts, the teams managed to make it through the fragmented rock after construction of 14 injection shields with nearly a thousand injection holes. They were then able to reach good, solid rock. In February 2021, the shaft base cabin was built with a delay of nearly a year, and construction of the launch ramp for the tunnel boring machine could begin. This ramp guides the machines in the previously drilled start of the shaft and maneuvers it to the initial slope of 26 degrees. Then the 80-meter-long cavern is ready. An assembly of the tunnel boring machine, TBM for short, can begin. The machine is delivered to the site in six separate parts. The drill head of the TBM naturally has the largest diameter, and the start of the shaft is precisely dimensioned for it. The machine is 100 meters long when fully assembled. The way this machine is designed, it doesn't need to be fully assembled to start operations. But what it does need is that you subscribe to Boost and click the like button if you've enjoyed the video so far. The time has finally arrived. 
the teams start the drilling of this massive tunnel. While the drill head has already begun to operate, the end of the TBM continues to be assembled in the launch cavern. Temporary solutions are required for removal of the excavated material and to supply the machine while it's still not fully assembled. After about three weeks, the regular operations finally begin. During drilling, the machine's 23 roller cutters roll over the rock under high pressure, breaking chips out of the rock. The loosened material falls into the cutting wheel and then into a material channel. The material slides down by itself. During the operation, four presses force the cutting wheel up against the rock with up to 500 tons of pressure, more than the weight of the entire machine. The gripper shield absorbs the forces and uses its two driving grippers to brace itself in the rock. A full drilling stroke is 1.2 meters long and normally takes about 30 minutes to complete. In the so-called driving shield, four motors are mounted to drive the cutting wheel. The resulting torque exerted on the driving shield is absorbed by the vertically positioned hydraulic systems. Through the combination of all the presses, each of which can be controlled individually, the driving shield, which ultimately lies loose in the rock, must be continuously aligned and stabilized during drilling. This is how the TBM is controlled. Once the machine has completed a full drilling stroke of 1.2 meters, driving operations stop. The hydraulics then advance the gripper shield. Once the grippers are retightened, the machine resumes driving operations. But before this, the entire machine has to be drawn forward. The remainder of the TBM consists of seven trailing units with the technical equipment to supply the machine. A fallback prevention device for safety was also designed. This device prevents the whole machine from sliding backward. Using extremely powerful hydraulics, the rear pair of grippers can be moved on the machine by about the length of a drilling stroke. The grippers are seated on connecting rods and are spread by hydraulics. If the grippers are in the rock and the machine wants to move backward, the grip is automatically tightened in the rock due to the sloped connecting rods, halting the machine. The mechanism operates solely on the basis of its geometry, functioning even in the event of an accident and loss of power on all hydraulics. Once the TBM reaches the maximum extension during drilling, the front fallback gripper is retracted. Then the rear gripper, which is fixed in place in the rock, is slid backward and the machine is pushed forward. Now the front gripper is fixed in place and the rear one is drawn forward. Once both fallback grippers are securely fixed and placed in the rock, the gripper shield is released and advanced. Then the rear part of the machine is brought forward again. The machine is now in the position of minimum extension and can begin drilling again. After four months of drilling, the TBM has powered through 450 meters of rock and about 200 meters of altitude. But then, the teams face a critical problem inside the mountain. The TBM has come to a complete stop 300 meters below the surface. The reason was unexpected. The TBM had delivered 12 cubic meters of excavated material without making any progress. The engineers figured that the material must have slipped in from above. This could risk the whole project if material from above crushes the machine. It could be nearly impossible to free the TBM. The entire project was again in a difficult situation. Six injection bores were drilled from above to investigate the site, which confirmed the suspicion. The teams concluded that an area of more than 20 cubic meters had started to shift in the loose rock, releasing some of its mass to the TBM. In order to prevent this during further operations, hollow steel rods were inserted into the boreholes. Cement was then injected under high pressure through the rods. After four weeks of injections and around 13 tons of injected cement, the moment of truth arrived. The TBM was carefully turned on again. To the great relief, there were no further rock slides. After the machine had made its way through 1,400 meters of the mountain, overcoming 800 meters of altitude, the moment that sometimes seemed impossible finally arrived on February 23, 2022. The TBM broke through the final wall of rock. The cutting wheel showed scars from crushing more than 10,000 cubic meters of rock. It was taken apart and transported away. 
the rest of the machine made its way back down the shaft after a year's journey through the rock. The machine arrived back in the launch cabin having done its job perfectly, even during some of the unexpected problems. The power plant is scheduled to be completed in 2024, and there's still a lot to do before the water flows from there to the turbines. Another thing happening in 2024 is more videos by Boost, so make sure to subscribe and click the like button to show your support. What are your thoughts on this video? Let me know in the comments below. Keep watching more videos by Boost, like this one on your screen now.